Hi, you know, can you hear? We can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear uh, me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, okay welcome. Sure. Thank you. So everyone, it's good to see you. Uh, I'm very happy to see all of you coming, some familiar names and faces, uh, some new friends. Um, it's the second Zoom meeting that we are doing. Uh, last time we talked about Jerusalem. It was uh, nice talking about Jerusalem. This day we talk about a different region in Israel, very important. Uh, Ruben, my colleague, will introduce it soon. Uh, I will just introduce my colleagues and then we will start. So my name is Inon. I'm a director of sales and marketing for SARL. Um, I've been to Indonesia several times um, and I have the pleasure of serving uh, many Indonesian friends in Israel. Of course, nowadays, we don't have too many people coming, but um, on a regular basis, we are seeing a growth in the Indonesian market. And this is thanks to you, our partners and friends. Uh, to my right hand side, to your left is Ibrahim, Vidal, manager of the Asian department. He is the one with his team taking care of Indonesian market. Uri, our general manager of SRL, managing uh, the whole operation of the company. And then Ruben Doron, the director of ministerial relations, is the one who is meeting our groups, one of the staff who are meeting the groups when they come to Israel, is part of the SRL difference in which we provide other services to our groups which are not necessarily related to operations or tourism. Uh, so if you would like with your group when they come to Israel, Ruven or one of his team can come to your hotel and talk to the group about many topics, um, about Bible or Messianic Jews or Israel nowadays, prophecy, <laughs> politics of Israel uh, and others. So thank you again. And I would pass the mic on to Uri, who would say some words and also give some updates about the situation in Israel. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me well? Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, thank you, Stephen, for initiating and putting this uh, whole Zoom together. We are about 50 people, which is absolutely great. Um, I would like to give you a little uh, update about the situation in Israel and how we look at it, because uh, uh, nothing is for sure and nothing is certain. And therefore, we have to leave the reality and make our own assessments. So currently, we are in a situation where about a month ago, we've been to a very good situation. And now we have an increased number of uh, people diagnosed or having the virus. And um, this is, this is um, because of more checkups that they are doing and, you know, uh, different statistics. So... Not necessarily whatever you see in the news is uh, as hard as it may seem, but we are definitely not in a positive situation like we've been a month ago. So uh, now the government is putting together all kinds of plans, uh, both on both levels of the uh, uh, health, Ministry of Health uh, uh, level and Ministry of Finance, because we all need support and help in order to uh, overcome this challenging uh, time. And um, what we do here at Sorel, uh, we did not stop for one single moment. Uh, we have a lot of uh, employees uh, on vacation, on leave because of the situation, but we kept on holding a massive team uh, on board to work with our clients, to update with the situation, to keep the connection, to work on the groups and make sure that we keep on booking and moving groups forward and booking everything so we are always ready for the day after. <clears throat> and so we've been here to serve our clients and we, uh, we didn't stop for a second. And the situation in Israel is so that uh, now they're trying to overcome the challenges. Uh, in my opinion, they will be, there will be a time, uh, I believe within a few weeks, that they will have to make a decision about opening the skies at a certain date. And uh, what we've been thinking uh, a couple of months ago, that once the coronavirus is zero, non-existent in Israel, they will open the skies. Uh, apparently, it seems like we will have to live with this virus and it will not get to a zero in order to start putting our lives together. And I think that the government is slowly but surely reaching this uh, uh, 
um, conclusion. understanding, conclusion, um, and it will come. And then with the right measures of medical checkups and wearing face masks and uh, keeping social distancing, uh, it will come that they will open to specific countries and add countries to, to the list uh, uh, as we go. So we don't know when will that happen. That's my assessment of the thing because I don't think we'll get to a zero uh, number and like we will say Israel is corona free and then we open the skies. I don't think this is the scenario that is going to happen. I believe it will be a low number that we feel that the country is in control and therefore we open the skies and very carefully and monitoring it and doing it in the right uh, way in order not to, to create. You know, in Israel they say that the coronavirus came to Israel in airplanes, so they don't want to bring the corona uh, back in, uh, in airplanes. So I think that the, this will be something that will happen within a few weeks that we will know when would that happen in October or November or something about that, uh, around that time. So currently what happens in Israel is that uh, uh, everybody is obliged to wear uh, face masks wherever you go outside. Also in the offices, we keep the social distancing. We gathered here, especially for you, but otherwise we are uh, sitting with uh, distances and the office is, uh, is not full as we have many employees on vacation, so that's easy to do. And, um, and uh, there's a uh, discipline uh, that should be even stronger in the country in order to lower the numbers. So uh, we, we kept this whole period being optimistic, knowing that this is the biggest crisis we have ever experienced. You know, in Israel, we've been to ups and downs. We've had terror attacks. We had wars. We had in the north. We had in the south. And whenever we had our, um, our crisis, it was local. It was local things here in the region. Now, it's the first time that we have such a global crisis that uh, it's, it's not only us suffering, it's the whole world. So we are in a situation where we, over, we, we are optimistic. We believe that we shall overcome this crisis. We have to invest a lot in it because for us now, uh, running, and you all know it because you are all in the same situation, bigger companies, smaller companies, but to keep on running a company for so many months uh, with no income, sustaining the uh, abilities, keeping the good people uh, for the day after, and, and keeping the clients happy, informing them, updating them, taking care of their future plans. We are working here on the, uh, in the office on groups for our clients for 2021 and 22. So we are, uh, we, are, we are there. We are here to serve, and we keep on doing it this whole time and shall continue until we will see tourists back on the ground here. So we are optimistic, but it's not that we are optimistic with specific information that we don't share with you, because we don't know either when will be the right time. Uh, we believe, we trust, we pray that it will be sooner than, than later, but at the moment we are waiting for government decisions and for improvement in the situation in Israel. And um, we keep you updated, and we hope that you also um, manage to uh, survive during this time and make future plans because good times will return with a vaccine or uh, uh, with more cautious steps but good times shall, shall come and we have to be prepared and you have to be prepared with you people so we are here for you and we keep on doing that uh, for the uh, any time, any period of time it will take and uh, Inon and his marketing team and Ibrahim and his department, Ruvin is doing a lot of things on Sorel Academy and he will tell you. So we keep on investing and preparing everything because we truly believe that, okay, it's a, it's a huge crisis, but it shall pass. So we are here, we're optimistic. The Holy Land is waiting for you and we look forward to seeing you and your people in the future. We will be prepared with whatever is needed. So I thank you for all your time so far and I shall pass the Mike to Ruven. Thank you, Uri, and thank you, friends, for joining us today. It is a much would have preferred to have you here in person, but uh, thank God for the technology. Yay! 
that we can be together uh, technologically across the globe. Now, for most of you, I know you are people of faith. And for you, uh, visit to Israel is not like a visit to any other destination around the world where you can enjoy sights and sounds and food or culture. Coming to Israel is a spiritual experience for most people. And so today we wanted to highlight uh, the northern area of Israel, the Galilee. And again, uh, I'm speaking to you from the perspective of Sarel Academy. Sarel Academy is the educational division of Sarel Group and of Sarel Tours and Conferences. And so we always emphasize that this is a tool that is available to you when you bring your groups to Israel, when you bring your tourists to visit uh, the land of the Bible, Sarel Academy is at your service uh, free of charge. It's complimentary. It's part of your uh, entire experience. Uh, we never charge for our services. And we basically offer you a number of educational, spiritual, uh, inspirational tools to help enrich the experience of the travelers. Today, we will talk about the northern part of Israel. Uh, some of you might remember how many Christian scholars called the Galilee, and especially the area of the Sea of Galilee, the fifth gospel. That is gospel number five. And the reason they call it the fifth gospel is because so much of what Jesus had said and taught and done was performed right around the Sea of Galilee. So we go through picture by picture and make a few comments just to whet your appetite and uh, remind you what's awaiting you here in Israel. Uh, the left side, the picture, which uh, the little title on the bottom left is said Banyas, uh, shows the spring of the Banyas. The Banyas is one of the three uh, springs that feed, the, that are forming the headquarter, the headwaters of the Jordan River. The Jordan River is fed by three tributaries that come from the northern regions. Uh, some of them are in uh, Syria, some of them are in Lebanon, but all of them uh, flow into Israel and form the upper Jordan River. The Banyas is one of them. Uh, it's a beautiful spring. We love to go visit her many times, and it is very prominently mentioned in the Gospels. Some of you might remember in uh, Matthew chapter 16, where the Lord Jesus took the disciples up north uh, to uh, a remote place, the Bible says, to ask them a very important question. And you might remember it. He said, who do men say that I am? And they gave him a few answers. Some say Elijah, some say the prophets, some say some of the other great guys. And he says, all right, well, who do you say that I am? That key question that really does touch the heart of every person of faith uh, what is your confession of faith? Who do you think Jesus is? That question was positioned strategically in the area of the Banyas Springs. It was a remote area, far from Jerusalem, far from uh, the, the Jewish neighborhoods. Uh, in fact, it was a pagan city. Uh, there was a very prominent pagan worship temples there. They worshipped the god of Pan, P-A-N, Pan was the mythological god of the forest, the shepherds, the music. Uh, he's the god of mischief. He's the god of uh, making trouble. And so that's where we get the words pandemonium or even pandemic or even um, panic. It all comes from the word pan. And it was the god that typified that region. And it was in that region that Jesus brought the disciples and said, all right, in the context of a hostile, unbelieving culture, who do you say that I am? And so when you bring your group to Israel, we will always recommend, and if at all possible, to introduce it into your itinerary to visit the Banyas Springs. The next picture right next to it, uh, of course, is, is one of um, uh, the many beautiful biblical-shaped boats that are sailing across the Sea of Galilee. We run many surveys throughout many of our groups and our visitors in Israel, and most people would agree that sailing across the Sea of Galilee is probably the highlight of their visit. And so every group that you would bring to Israel, uh, we would always guide you and um, lead you into a beautiful experience of sailing across the Sea of Galilee. It takes about an hour or so. Uh, the group will sail to the heart of the, of the lake. Uh, the boat will stop for a while, will quiet down the engines, uh, usually we'll crank up the worship music and so folks can worship, they can praise the Lord, whether it is a Catholic group 
or an evangelical group, whatever the faith background may be, it always is a place uh, that touches the heart of the pilgrims. The third picture on this slide is, of course, the ski resort that uh, is positioned on top of the Hermon Mountain. Hermon Mountain is the highest um, peak of the Hermon Mountain Range uh, on the Israeli side of the border, and that's where Israel positioned its one and only uh, ski resort. So if you come to Israel in the winter and you'd like to ski, we can provide the service. Next slide will give you uh, the uh, map of Northern Israel, of course, is prominent here on the left upper side of the slide. And this map shows you the entire breadth of Israel from the Mediterranean on the left, all the way through the Galilee. Uh, and then on the right side of the Sea of Galilee, of course, we'll find the Golan Heights. And we'll have a few slides specific to that. But this entire region is what we would consider the Galilee, the lower Galilee on the bottom, the upper Galilee, which uh, depicts uh, taller mountain peaks and a wilder uh, surrounding beautiful landscapes are in the upper part of the, of the Galilee. And of course, in the middle of it is the beautiful Sea of Galilee, which again, you see a couple of uh, pictures of the Sea of Galilee with a local uh, birds. And again, one of our boats sailing across the sea with a happy group on top of it. Uh, that sea is not very large. It's called the Sea of Galilee in the scriptures. It's actually a lake. It is a sweet water lake that is fed by the Jordan River, but also by a number of underground springs that actually are buried deep below the Sea of Galilee. Uh, it is about um, seven miles wide, uh, 15 miles long. You can see in this case, the picture is taken from west looking east and so what you see in the background of this picture behind the boat would be the Golan Heights, another beautiful region of Israel. The picture of the bottom right side of the slide is uh, St. Peter's Primacy Church, which is located right on the northern shores of the Sea of Galilee, one of our favorite places to come and visit, which commemorates uh, some of the most uh, known biblical uh, references to Peter and his uh, following of Jesus. The next slide has a couple of very interesting uh, slides, pictures of uh, the local findings. The upper left one, Capernaum slide, is of course taken from the uh, site of Capernaum. In the Hebrew language, it's made out of two words, Kfar Nahum. Kfar Nahum, that is your Hebrew lesson for the day. And uh, what we would say in English, Capernaum, actually means in Hebrew, the village of comfort, Kfar Nahum. No wonder this is where Jesus placed his headquarters. And for more than three years, this is where he settled. Uh, he lived probably in Peter's home. Uh, some of the excavations in the village discovered a home that might, might very well be Peter's home. Some of the miracles of healings and of teachings took place right there. And the picture in the upper left corner of this slide in Capernaum is actually the picture of the, uh, the early centuries AD synagogue that was built upon the foundations of the first century synagogue right in that location, which was no doubt the synagogue that Jesus taught in many times, as the Gospels tell us that he was preaching and teaching in the synagogues all throughout the Galilee. Well, this would be one of those synagogues. It actually is a very beautiful uh, remains. We know that this was a very wealthy community. Uh, the synagogue is built in a Roman style. There were beautiful uh, Roman columns. Uh, the entrance was, of course, facing Jerusalem. It was a very large, uh, made with uh, limestone, which was not even local stone. The local stones there is the dark basalt uh, granite rock. So these stones were brought from afar to create a beautiful synagogue in which, no doubt, the early Messianic believers in the first centuries after the resurrection of the Lord worshiped him. So this is a spot we will definitely uh, love to bring your group to visit. The slide below that, the picture below that is from Beth Hesta, another biblical community mentioned prominently in the New Testament, located right on the northern side of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, the upper right corner of the slide, of course, is the beautiful Catholic church taken from a drone. Uh, it's an aerial shot of uh, the Mount of Beatitudes. 
It is a beautiful location. Um, wish we would have more pictures to share with you of that location, but it is uh, overseeing the entire Sea of Galilee. There's a natural amphitheater laying right below that church, which uh, no doubt could have provided perfect acoustics for the Sermon on the Mount. The Bible tells us in the Gospel of Matthew that uh, the disciples came to the Lord and began to ask him some questions, and so he led them once again uh, to a high point, and he sat them down, and many people from the entire region began to gather in, and he opened his mouth and gave us what the Bible calls the Sermon on the Mount, or the Beatitudes, the longest single teaching of Jesus that is recorded in the Scriptures. And that's the location where it was given. And so every pilgrim group, whether it be Catholic groups, evangelicals, Pentecostals, anybody who has any uh, inkling of faith uh, will always come to the uh, Mount of Beatitudes, take a little time to pray, to tour the beautiful site, and to remember those eternal words of Jesus. The picture at the bottom of the slide, uh, just taken north of the Sea of Galilee, just shows you some of our buses. Uh, Sarel Group operates our own, uh, <clears throat> our own um, bus company, our own uh, transportation company, and so many of your groups that you will bring to Israel with us uh, will enjoy our own uh, state-of-the-art, uh, brand new, most of them, air-conditioned, Wi-Fi buses, and now in the corona age, we also added special air, filter, air filtration systems on all of our buses so that the air would be purest than ever. And this was one of our largest groups. Our air group uh, is uh, specializing, of course, in Christian pilgrim tours. And uh, we, we, we do groups as small as one bus or even less, but we do specialize in larger projects. In this case, I think it was one of our largest groups and uh, thousands of pilgrims come to Israel in one group, and we can handle it and have done it many times. The next slide will show us again some of the beautiful sites of the region. This one would be from the Golan Heights on the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. The top left picture is from Gamla, one of the uh, known uh, final stand uh, for the Jewish rebels during the great uh, Roman rebellion against the Roman Empire. And so Gamla is a place that is worthwhile visiting. Tel Dan, the center upper picture, is another beautiful water park in northern Israel. Um, again, one of the tributaries of the Jordan River flows in that area. Cool waters that come directly from the melting snow on the Hermon Mountain from the top of the Golan Heights, flow to the dam, preserve, and it is a beautiful place. Uh, we have groups that go down there for baptisms, even though it is not one of the classical baptisms place, we've seen that done as well, simply because of the beauty of the region. It is a, it is a part of Israel that is not very well known, and yet we love to bring our groups there, if the itinerary permits, because it is so beautiful and so profound. Uh, of course, we see Tel Saki, the upper right picture, which is one of our 1973, the Yom Kippur War, the War uh, of the Day of Atonement of 1973, memorials, uh, some of the biggest tank battles ever fought in the history of the battles of the world were fought on the Golan Heights during the 1973 epic war. It was prophecy fulfilled. Uh, it was a tremendous time. Uh, in fact, some of us serving at Sarel Tours uh, were soldiers at the time and fought in that war. And so uh, this, if itinerary permits, and if your group is interested in some of the geopolitical aspects of uh, visiting Israel, uh, this will be one of the spots that will be a very profound uh, teaching place to be. And of course, the bottom picture, the broad one that is titled Mount Mental, is a beautiful view, a very epic view, of some of the plains that are uh, flat across the Golan Heights that served as the battlegrounds for some of those very uh, intense fighting in 1973. Beautiful sites. Today, it is one of our quietest borders. It is very safe. It is very beautiful. And if time permits, we would always recommend to bring your groups up north. A few pictures left, and I think this is our last slide. Uh, this now is the western part of the Galilee. 
So we are looking into the uh, Carmel mountain range and some of the things that are found right about it. The upper left picture is, of course, the Baha'i Gardens. Israel is a spiritual hub for uh, numerous faiths. One of the least known ones, possibly, is the Baha'i faith. It is a small community of uh, very devout uh, believers from around the world. And uh, the founders of that small faith group is actually buried in Israel, uh, a little north from Haifa, in the city of Akko, on the coast. But this is one of the main worship sites. It is a beautiful temple, beautiful gardens, located in the heart of the city of Haifa, one of our biggest northern port cities on the Mediterranean, and a beautiful spot to visit. Right next to it, in the center of photo, of course, is a, uh, a rendition of a statue of Elijah during the time when he worked God's righteousness against the prophets of Baal in the Carmel Mountain encounter. You remember that story, 1 Kings chapter 17, incredible epic time. Israel was uh, deeply uh, steeped in compromise. And uh, the prophet called all of Israel to the Carmel Mountain, and he told the prophets of Baal, well, do you do your best and ask your God to bring fire from heaven. And when you're done, I'll do my best. And you know the rest of the story, fire came down from heaven. Uh, the judgments of God came upon the prophets of Baal. And this is the commemoration point, beautiful spot on the top of the Carmel Mountain range, which we'd love to bring your group to, and many of our pilgrim groups do make it there. You see the mountain range in the small picture on the right-hand side of the upper slide, and that is where the Carmel Mountain is located. It is right along the coast, beautiful mountain range. Carmel, in the Hebrew language, is again made of two Hebrew words, Kerem El, the vineyard of the Lord. And it is called that way in Hebrew because it is such a beautiful mountain range that is always green, always thriving with life, and... Uh, uh, makes for a beautiful place for your group to visit, as many of our pilgrim groups do. Below that is the famous Crusaders Halls uh, in Akko. It is about uh, 30, 40 minutes drive north from Haifa, right along the Mediterranean coast, and it features some uh, very historic uh, spots, including a very rich uh, Crusaders history, and some of these finds, some of these remains of the Crusaders Fort, the fortress and the remains of the great battles that were fought there in previous centuries. The large picture on the left bottom of the slide is, of course, our northern city of Haifa, a beautiful city that is uh, stretching down the slopes of the Carmel mountain range into the famous Haifa Bay that is serving as one of our largest uh, deep water ports in Israel. I think this is our last slide. And this was your little uh, virtual trip and visit to Israel today. We're looking forward to having you here in person. And again, on behalf of Sarel Academy, we are at your service to bring lectures, Bible studies, and encounters with local Christians, local Messianic believers with your groups to enrich your experience. Back to you, Yunan. Thank you, Ruben. And now Ibrahim will show you some examples of uh, itineraries that you can do in the region of uh, the Galilee and the Golan Heights. So long everyone. Uh, my name is Ibrahim. I'm the manager of the Asian department at Sarah Tools and Conferences. Uh, me and my team is uh, uh, the one will uh, serve some, uh, some of you and will serve uh, you in the future. Uh, praying to God that this situation will be uh, behind us uh, very soon. So uh, we are recommended uh, to stay in the north part of Israel in, uh, in Tiberias. This is uh, one of the places to, uh, to stay in uh, because of the location. Uh, Tiberias is the city near the Sea of Galil uh, at the north part of Israel and it's, uh, it's uh, near uh, all the sites that we have talked about before. So uh, we highly recommend it to uh, stay uh, at least uh, two nights, three days uh, in the north part in order to cover um, the most important sites, uh, part of the sites that you, you already saw uh, on our presentation uh, by Reuven. 
So uh, I will uh, I will uh, present some sites of, of one of the itineraries that it's uh, focusing on the north part of of Israel, uh, starting uh, uh, whenever you are coming from Jerusalem or coming from uh, uh, from uh, Jordan or coming from Tel Aviv Airport with your group. Um, for example, let's take a, let's take an itinerary that it's you are coming or landing in in Tel Aviv. So this will be the first day of the group uh, that's landing in Tel Aviv, for example. Uh, the first site that will be after the airport, of course, you'll meet uh, our guide and driver, and then you'll start your tour, uh, driving to Haifa, uh, visiting the uh, Bahai Gardens and overviewing uh, Haifa Bay, that it's uh, uh, one of the biggest bays in Israel, active, and one of the main ones. Uh, it's a very nice view, really uh, breathtaking, and uh, and uh, of course the the view of the Bahia Gardens. You have several uh, views to uh, to to see the the uh, the temple, but I think that the best one would be the the one if you see it from above that you can comb uh, do a combination between the the temple and the the bay itself. <clears throat> It also can be a stop by on only. You can just, uh, you know, the group can uh, just uh, the bus can uh, uh, park uh, near the near the Bay Gardens view and just go down for a few minutes, 15 minutes to 20 minutes maximum. The guide, the guide will explain about about the, the Bay Gardens, about Haifa, about the Bay, and then you can just go up the bus and, and continue the, your tour while going to uh, back, uh, to your hotel in Tiberias, or we can add uh, the city of Akko. Uh, which uh, we also saw it on our uh, the last uh, slide of uh, presentation, um, uh, visiting the uh, Cursor area of Fotis. It's uh, uh, one of the main sites in, in Akko. Uh, as you can see here, it's, uh, uh, um, there's a lot also of, of Muslim sites in, in, in Akko, a lot of uh, mosques that uh, the Ottomans uh, built in this city. After then, we can uh, drive uh, to our hotel at the base for uh, for check-in and also overnight have a rest. Um, and also, I, I didn't explain before, but we can also uh, offer, you know, have breakfast and dinner in the hotels. We can offer also lunches um, and on, on the route of the tour that uh, the group will have uh, um, on a daily basis. Day number two after your breakfast, uh, we can drive the first site would be Mukhraka, Mount Carmel. Uh, as the Ruben uh, explains, the place where Prophet Elijah defeated the 400 Baal prophets. Um, it's uh, it's uh, located in Mount Carmel. Uh, after this, we can uh, drive to uh, Megiddo, uh, the site of the last war, war uh, and we'll continue our passing uh, after this to Nazareth. The, um, um, the, the the city that uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, Christ uh, grew there, grow there, and uh, visiting the uh, Annunciation uh, Church, one of the uh, um, uh, most impressive churches in the north part of Israel. We can visit also in, uh, nearby. It's the old city of Nazareth, and uh, most of our groups is enjoying this part of the tour. Uh, after this, the city near Nazareth is Kana. Kana, we can visit the Church of Kana, where the first miracle happened. Um, we can also do their um, renew uh, vows for the um, for the married uh, the married couples. It's uh, it's you know we can arrange it with the church, and uh, if you are coming with a with a priest or not, or we can we can arrange that for you also as well. After visiting Kana, we are uh, driving back to Tiberias for our hotel. And uh, this day will be a day around the Sea of Galil, starting from uh, Mount uh, of Pieredudes. Um, then after then, we'll go to Tabra, which is it's, uh, it's a two side that is almost near, uh, uh, near each other. Uh, visiting uh, Tabra, then we'll visit uh, Capernaum, uh, the main cities. Uh, 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 the area in, in Jesus' time. Well, then uh, uh, after that, we can uh, do a boat ride on on a Sea of Galilee. Depends on the on the guide or or the pastor or the priest. We can do it in the morning, 
uh, the middle of the day and the evening. It uh, depends really on uh, on the group. Um, of course, the, the Sea of Galilee ride is it's a boat ride about 45 minutes. Uh, of course, the Sea of Galilee and uh, uh, visiting also the ancient boat that it's found buried in the Kibbutz Genosar. It's a very nice also uh, museum that you can visit with the group. And we'll finish our tour in Magdala site. We can even visit, uh, there's a synagogue from the first century. Uh, Magdala is the city of Maria Magdalena. Um, it's one of the newest sites uh, in Israel. A few years ago, uh, they just opened this site for the groups. On the fourth day, uh, after finished, after of course checking out from the hotel, uh, we can start our day at uh, the uh, baptism site, Yard the Meat. Um, if anyone of the group want to uh, get baptized, this is the this is the site, and then can drive north or south, depends on 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 the on the day. Visiting the Banyas uh, Natural Reserve that we. So in our uh, presentation before with Reuven, um, continue to the Dan Natural Reserve and uh, also uh, one of the most beautiful views that uh, uh, climbing Mount Bental, overviewing uh, Israel, Golan, Galil and Jordan Valley, also Syria. It's one of the, uh, I think, one of the best views uh, above uh, you can see uh, Israel and uh, Syria from uh, from there, also also Lebanon. And um, so basically, this is the site. This is the uh, um, three nights, four days itinerary. As I said, we can uh, get it shorter for of maybe one night, uh, two days depends on the group. We have depends how many nights you are planning to stay in Israel. Um, we can also, as I said, we recommend for staying for two nights, uh, three days. Uh, in, in Tiberias in order to uh, cover the most important sites on this area. So um, we will share, Stephen will share with you the, um, if you need, the itinerary and also the presentation that we uh, gave you before by Ruven, so you can have it as a tool that uh, uh, will help you to uh, learn more about the, the north part of Israel. Till then, I really... Uh, Pray and hope that you and your families will be okay. And I really hope and that this era will be behind us very soon and we will continue um, serving uh, Indonesian agents uh, as well very soon. So thank you very much and you stay safe. Thank you, Ibrahim. I think, Stephen, that now we can have some time for uh, questions and answers. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for the great update. Um, yes, sekarang ada waktu untuk uh, tanya pertanyaan. Seperti tadi saya ada tulis, kalau ada pertanyaan mau tulis di chat bisa atau enggak bisa unmute sendiri terus langsung tanya. Um, mumpung ada uh, Ibrahim dan Yinon, and um, yang silakan aja kalau ada yang mau tanya ya. Um, okay, let's see. Any questions? But anyway, you um, heard from Ibrahim. Ibrahim is the person yang, um, if you ask for any quotation or um, any quote that come to you, to Ibrahim is the one that will do it in his team. So it's good to put a, a face to the name. So. Um, so don't be shy. Please um, just ask any question. Uh, no question is a silly question. Um, there's a question, but it's sent to my private. <laughs> it's um, a question asking about visa. Um, they're asking is visa, um, is it hard to get a visa? And Is it hard to process a visa with only uh, one name? In Indonesia, there's a lot of people that doesn't have a surname. It's just one name. So can you answer that question? OK, so uh, I will uh, explain about the visa process. As I said, we can uh, help you 
uh, applying a uh, group visa starting from five packs. This will be the minimum. Uh, the price is uh, $15. This is the price that uh, the Minister of Interior is, is, uh, is requesting us to pay. So this is the rate that you also will pay if you need um, to uh, apply the, the visa for Israel. Um, and it's, uh, the process is uh, 30, 30 working days. So it's, if you have a group that's coming, for example, in a, in a, in a, thir a month or more, so this is uh, this will be the, the time that we need to apply uh, visas. So 30, work 30 working days, minimum five bags, bags. and about the, um, the if it's uh, only one name, so it's okay. We can put the, uh, and the this name on the first and also on the last name. The most important thing on the uh, on the applying the visa is the passport details. That it's the passport number, the uh, issue date, expired date, and uh, this is the most important three things about the name. So we can, as, as I said, this name we can put it as a first and a last name on the application. It should be okay. Is it difficult to get for Indonesian citizens? Um, uh, Indo Indonesia and, and, and Malaysia, uh, both countries, is, is the long uh, proceed for the visa. It's take 30 days because they are checking, you know, uh, everyone personally and also with other countries, it's maybe 10 days or two weeks, depends. Um, but I can uh, uh, say that 99% uh, of all groups from Indonesia is, is getting the visa very, uh, very easily. Okay, great. So remember, uh, yeah, to apply early if you want to send a group to Israel. There's another question um, from Pak Ucup. Um, where, when is the land border uh, reopened between Jordan, Israel, and Egypt? Yeah, we are not sure yet. I think nobody knows. Okay. Um, Jordan, I can tell you that uh, they also they already passed the virus, so they don't have new cases for many days now. So it looks like the country is clean and safe. Uh, Egypt and Israel uh, are increasing the number number of tests. So because of the increasing of the tests, it looks like the numbers are growing. And for that reason, uh, the borders are remaining closed. Uh, the official date of opening the borders is August 1st. But of course, with the situation, nobody knows if it really happened. <clears throat> so we all have to wait and see. I have a similar question from Pat Roy. I think that answers the question as well. So, um, but uh, Sar L will be doing a monthly update with us um, and we will let you know in the next update. So I think the next one will be August. We probably have more details and more clearer uh, details when borders will reopen. So keep in tune for this. Um, okay, so I think that's, that answers the question. Um, any other question um, that you want to ask? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, airline is also similar, right? There's uh, with the border opening, I think more and more airline will come when yeah. the borders reopen. So right now, I think still very limited, maybe with, similar to other countries where um, the borders are open for uh, Israeli citizen coming back to the country. Is that correct? Yeah, many airlines renewed the flights. So we are having, um, I would say, between four to eight daily flights to New York alone, for example. We have two daily flights for San Francisco, two daily flights for London Heathrow. So that's an, that's an increase of flights compared to just two weeks ago. Um, now foreigners cannot get in, so it's just for Israelis who hold two passports. Uh, but uh, it's very interesting, just one example, Virgin Atlantic, it's an airline from the UK, they used to fly a one daily flight uh, before the pandemic, and they announced that for March onwards, they will have two daily flights. So that means uh, airlines are planning to even increase their capacity to Israel. But of course, uh, even though we are seeing an increase, also Swiss is flying now daily. Lufthansa returned to two or three daily flights, but this is compared to over 10 flights daily before. Uh, but we are seeing an increase, a steady, safe, increase, but uh, it's not the numbers that we want to see yet. 
Uh, I don't know, can you open the chat on your side? There's a few questions coming yeah. in. Uh, one is from Pa Anton Chia. Can Anthony you read Chia. that one? Will there be challenges in the coming future for tour group who choose to stay in Bethlehem? Yeah, thank you, Anthony. It's good to see you here. And we don't see that there will be any difference once the people will be allowed in the country. Inside the country, it will probably be the same. Also in Israel, we are here. Other than wearing masks, we don't feel that our daily life is being uh, disturbed. Daily life is as usual in Israel, and we believe that tourism, once it's coming back, will be the same. So Bethlehem, are, uh, the Bethlehem hotels are ready and they are waiting for the groups to come back. So we believe it will be just the same with Bethlehem. Okay, another question, Ben Gurion Airport, is it open for Indonesian passport? Currently, our airports are open for Israeli passports only. And once it will be open, it will be probably open first to what is called green countries, which are countries we, uh, that manage to put the numbers down. This would be probably mainly New Zealand, Australia, uh, some European countries, some Asian countries like Taiwan and Hong Kong, China first. But we expect more countries to join as the numbers uh, improve. I have uh, another question in my private uh, chat. It says, um, Indonesians like to shop for souvenirs. Um, there's been an information that when you buy souvenir in Israel, there will be um, a border check in Israel. Yeah, and okay, so. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Uh, Jordan, the country that is located to the east of Israel, uh, for some reason, they don't allow or they don't like Jewish uh, symbols, Judaica. So Jewish menorahs and Jewish shofar. So if you come with one menorah or one shofar small in your luggage, most probably they will let you through. But we have seen cases that uh, groups came, especially agents or pastors, they came with a luggage full of menorahs or shofars. And the Jordanian authorities, for some reason, they are very sensitive to it. Uh, I'm not sure what the re reason is, but they don't want you to take big quantities of these into their country. So they will just uh, ask you to leave it at the border. So in that cases, we usually ask the driver to come and pick it up and somehow during the next group, they managed to take it out. So <coughs> Israel and Egypt, no problem whatsoever. Jordan only, uh, just make sure that you don't have large quantity of the same thing in one luggage. The second part of that question is, um, so what would you suggest the best entrance point and exit point if you're doing a tour in Israel? Because Indonesians love to shop for souvenirs. Yeah, it's a good question. Well, the heart of the tour, the most important parts of the tour are all in Israel. So if you take, if you try to take the five most important sites in each country, in, Egypt, in Jordan, it will be maybe Petra, Mount Nebo, Madaba, then maybe Jordan River, and then you, you will have hard time to find the fifth one. Egypt, the same, the pyramids, the Nile, Mount Sinai, and then again, you will find hard time to find the others. Israel, uh, you can name 50 sites, Jerusalem, Nazareth, Bethlehem, the Sea of Galilee, uh, and other, other many other sites. So if that is the field, you can do Israel only. Israel only will be a rich tour. Israel is a destination that you can visit time after time. And each time you can see new things. It's never boring, even after 10 times. So if the aim of the tour is to shop this stuff, then I suggest do Israel only. Uh, but of course, why don't you visit the other countries if you made all the way and you came here to, to the Middle East? So Jordan and Egypt are great extensions uh, for the tool. Uh, and just be smart when you pack uh, these things. So maybe share it among your friends, and maybe not too big of things, and that's it. So it may be better to enter through Jordan or Egypt first and then depart from Israel? You can enter Jordan, then continue to eat uh, Israel, and then Egypt. The only thing is that take a note that 
When you start in Jordan and finish in Egypt, the border taxes and visa fees are a bit higher. Okay. Compared to when you start in Egypt and go to Jordan, it's a bit lower. And also it's more accurate following the biblical story of the Exodus, starting in Egypt as slaves to the desert, the Red Sea, entering to the Promised Land, and not vice versa. Good, thank you. I hope that uh, answers the question. I have uh, an interesting question here as well. It says that if I have a group, a uh, VIP group coming from America, they are Indonesians, but um, American citizens wanted to come to Israel, but they want an Indonesian tour leader from Indonesia, a specific tour leader coming. Is that um, to join them in the group? Is there, a, would that be easy to um, organize the visa for that tour leader. Yeah, so we can apply for groups of five people and above. In that case of the one individual, what will happen is that the agent will need to send us the passport information. We will prepare an official letter of invitation. We will send you back the letter of invitation. This individual will have to go to an Israel embassy uh, the closest to you, so maybe Singapore or somewhere else in the area, Hong Kong or another country, and then apply Israel visa from there. In most cases, they get the visa. The letter of invitation says that we know him, we are expecting him, we is going to lead a group, uh, and that we are responsible for his stay. And usually, he will get the visa. I hope that answered the question. Thank you for your questions. Any more questions while we have um, everyone there? Okay. If not, um, please, if you have friends or if you want to see again the update, you can tune in in our YouTube channel. And, um, and also, please remember that um, it's not just an update, but if you do have any queries, any question, or any uh, packages or quote requirements, just let us know. I'm sure Ibrahim and the team will be happy to send you rates and information as you need it. So thank you for coming today. Thank you, everyone in SARL for your time and for the update. Uh, we appreciate that very much. Yeah. Any last words before we finish the meeting today? You know, and just thank you. Yeah. Just want to thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. It's very important. You have uh, you have uh, our uh, uh, emails and other means of communication. So do feel free with any questions, issues, whatever you may need uh, that we can work on and, uh, and update you and give you the most accurate information. Don't count on the uh, on the media. We know there's a lot of fake news, but we are here on the ground to give you the fresh and the correct information. So um, remember, now we are all, you know, in the in the big darkness, and it seems like it's endless. But the good times will come. Suddenly, we will see the light, and we shall continue where we stopped and do what we know to do. So uh, be in touch with us. Keep on the faith with the. Uh, people to come on the groups in the future and the skies will open. We will keep you updated. Thank you everybody for your time and stay safe and healthy and looking forward to see you as we say next year in Jerusalem. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's that last question was um, about the visa. I think the minimum is five pe people from Indonesia, isn't it? Not um, one person. Sorry, five? Five. five yeah, seven, so, yeah not individual visa, so Ibuifa, um, it still needs to be minimum of five even when things get back to normal, yeah? But thank you again for tuning in and we will see you again next Tuesday. Uh, we will have an update from New Zealand for next Tuesday. Meanwhile, thank you, team at SRL. Uh, we'll see you again next month. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, everyone. <laughs> Wear masks. <laughs> thank you. Shalom, shalom. Okay. Terima kasih. Shalom. Bye bye. Shalom. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Take care.